cancer patients experience their care like this. Our system still favors treating each of those clinicians as distinct entities and keeping key clinical information locked up in silos. So across this fragmented system with multiple handoffs and disconnected processes, it may come as no surprise that more than one in three adult cancer patients will receive at least some component of their care that evidence has shown will have no benefit for that patient. So in other words, despite our best intentions, we sometimes deliver no value care for cancer patients. At Stanford's Clinical Excellence Research Center, we wanted to impact this problem and radically improve the value of care for cancer patients. We used an iterative design thinking approach that involved site visits to cancer centers across the country who were positive outliers, doing something extraordinary in quality and often managed cost. We looked for results that had been demonstrated but not necessarily scaled yet nationally or perhaps not even yet implemented in cancer care. The result was this three-part model. But before we talk about each of the parts, I need to show you a very important source of inspiration for the model. So that's probably not what you were expecting. You may be asking, what does a centaur, a half-man, half-horse, mythical creature from ancient Greece have to do with a model for cancer care? So the secret is you actually have to fast forward about 25 centuries to a more contemporary type of centaur, and it's centaur chess. You may recall in 1997, IBM's deep blue supercomputer defeated chess grandmaster Garry Kasparov. However, about eight years later, there was potentially an even more amazing finding in chess in the world of machine versus human, and it was this. It's not machine versus human. It's machine plus human. So in 2005, in a chess tournament called Centaur Chess, humans and machines could compete on the same team in all configurations. And the winners of the tournament were two amateur players, not chess grandmasters. They were using two conventional laptops, not fancy technology. What they had was a unique collaborative process in how the machine and human worked together to use data and look deeply into chess positions. So Gary Kasparov, the chess grandmaster, summed this up as machine plus human plus better process is the winning formula. So now we'll look at what that winning formula of machine plus human plus better process looks like in cancer care. So model part one, this is the machine, pathway software. So Pathways Software basically recommends the optimal treatment plan for patients based on data and outcomes. And it looks at outcomes that patients care about, like survival and decreased hospitalizations or other indicators that quality of life during treatment is better. But Pathways Software also does something else. It explicitly favors lower costs, where there's an equivalent clinical benefit between a high cost option and a low cost option. And this is important because just as no cancer patient is served by going to the hospital on what could have been an avoidable hospital visit, no patient is served by having unnecessary out-of-pocket expenses that they didn't need to have. And no patient community is served if we're not good stewards of our collective resources. So model part two, this is the human part in the winning formula. In our model, it's called the Physician Innovation Collaborative. And it recognizes that physicians play a critical role as stewards of the care process and of the very pathways that we're using to deliver care for patients. And so best practice suggests that these physicians get together regularly and do two critical things. One is they review the outcomes for the pathways and they assure that we are getting the results we wanted for patients, that we expected from the pathways. And the second, is to determine when it's right to go off pathway for a particular patient, and then to review those outcomes and understand what they teach us. What is that evidence suggesting about what might be the innovation in care and how might we improve those pathways for the next patient? And finally, model part three is the superior process. 
in our model, it's staff optimization. So thanks to nearly 50 years of the war on cancer, we've reached a place where we know what the optimal treatment plan is for some 60% of cancer patients. So we know what the optimal treatment care plan is, but what we don't always have is the superior process to make sure that we deliver it easily and efficiently every time for every patient. The solution is to shift more care to other team members like nurse practitioners who can get great at care delivery and optimizing care delivery. We're often focused on optimizing care design what should the treatment plan be? But how do we really knock it out of the park and how we deliver it and do that over and over again for every patient? So machine plus human plus better process equals higher value care for cancer patients. But there's another bonus. If a model like this were scaled across the country, we would save billions every year. And so I leave you with this question. What might we better do with the billions of dollars currently wasted on no value care for cancer patients. Thank you.